Hey everybody, today I have the tutorial for signed card to Jokers. Again, this is an effect I uploaded seven years ago. I have a tutorial link in the description box from 2012 if you want to go check that out. If you've been into Magic for a while, you know there are several different ways to get a spectator's card in between two Jokers. Um, I'm not saying this is the best way or even one of the better ways to do it. This is just the way I did it, so keep that in mind when you're watching the tutorial. So what I use is a card, it doesn't matter what card it is, and a duplicate of that card, and obviously the two Jokers. Now, you don't have to use a duplicate card. I, I use one because I like to show the spectator's card in the deck one more time before I make it jump from the deck to in between the two jokers. So, again, it's not necessary, but that's just what I use. So I set the deck up like this. The card I'm going to force goes on top. The other queen of hearts is going to go second from bottom. And then the two jokers go in random positions in the deck. Now, I begin. I just say I'm going to remove the two jokers from the deck. They're going to help us in a moment. Uh, as I spread through to find the two jokers, me personally, I don't flash the card I'm about to force because, uh, you know, I don't want them to see it and then pick it a few seconds later. So, just my personal preference is I spread over the Queen of Hearts that is second from bottom. Uh, so we find the two jokers. There's one, outjogged it, and there is number two, outjog it. And then I just say we'll get back to those in a little while. Now I force the Queen of Hearts on the spectator. What I did in the performance is a fairly simple force. You guys can use whatever force you want to use. Uh, I cut about two-thirds of the deck over into my other hand, hold a pinky break at that queen, and I throw a couple more packs on top of that. Now all I do is the dribble force, which, again, I have the card I'm going to force in a pinky break. I switch that to a thumb break, which looks like that. And then I just dribble the cards, everything underneath the thumb break. When the spectator calls stop, I drop everything at that break, and they're going to get the Queen of Hearts. So, that's the force I used. They've got their card. I asked them to sign their card. I'm not going to sign this card for the tutorial. Uh, I don't want to ruin this card for this deck, but uh, just imagine that it is signed. I blow on the signature, make sure it's dry. Now I do a very simple card control. Most of you guys, again, if you've been into Magic for a while, you probably know this one as well. I pull down Pinky Break, the bottom card. And then I transfer that to a thumb break, which looks like that. Then I swing cut their card over along with about half the deck. Turn their card over, say we're going to lose it somewhere in the middle. And then I stop about here and say, look, I'll even show you one more time. It's going in the middle. I show them. And uh, again, if you didn't catch that, what I did was you turn their card over. As you push their card up to show it to them one more time, that card you have in thumb break, as you push up and this thumb meets the back of the bottom packet, you're going to drop that card off uh, right when it's lined up with the bottom packet. And then you're going to pull away, show their card one more time. I shouldn't have to say this, but just make sure you don't flash that. Okay. Uh, as you pull away, turn your wrist over to show them. As you turn back over, you're going to square the Queen of Hearts up. You don't want them to see that, so you square it up just like that. And you put what they think is their Queen of Hearts in the middle and say we've completely lost your card in the middle of the deck. Uh, and it's remained on top. Now comes the load of their card in between the two jokers. Uh, in the performance, you saw me take the two jokers, and I was like, yeah, um, I'm going to use the two jokers now. Like I said, uh, I got one silver joker that's going to help us and one colorful joker that's going to help us. And what I do is I set down a double right here. You have more of a chance of the double kind of splitting apart like that, so if you're not very good at setting doubles down, a few other loads you can do. You have their card on top. Here's one of the most basic ones. You have the two jokers setting over here. You say, we're going to use the two jokers now. Um, I try to talk a little bit about the jokers because otherwise, why would you pick them up? You don't want to just pick them up and say, yeah, we're going to use the two jokers now. Uh, this one and this one here. That just looks kind of weird. Why did you even have to pick the jokers up? Why couldn't you just turn the jokers over and say, yeah, we're going to use the two jokers and then do the move? So I try to talk a little bit about them. Use that as misdirection to load the card. So... Uh, as you saw in the performance, I'll be like, yeah, we're going to use the two jokers, like I said, they're going to help us out. Now I have one colorful joker and I have one silver joker. And I just kind of, I either talk about the color or the design. If I were using this deck, I would be like, okay, so now we're going to use the two jokers. I told you they're going to help us find your card. Uh, I actually like these two jokers a lot. Sorry, a little bit off topic here. Uh, two jokers, you can see, there's one with uh, two tips pointing and then we have one over here and an X. They're going to help us find your card. The way they're going to do that, and then I would go on into the routine, and I've already loaded that card in between the two jokers. But 
Uh, again, a basic load of their card in between the two jokers. You're gonna get their card in a pinky break, and you're gonna set both jokers on top of that, and then you can talk about the jokers if you want to, use whatever pattern you want to use. Pick all three cards up that were in the break, and then you're just gonna slide off the top joker, and then put their card and the other joker right on top, and just set both cards down like that. That's a really basic load. You can load them any way you want to. One I use sometimes is I have their card in pinky break. I'll pick up both jokers and I'll talk about them and then I'll slide this one underneath the two cards I have in pinky break. So I'll slide that in the break and then I'll just set both down just like that. So you can do whichever one works best for you. Uh, again, in the performance, I just set the double down. You have their card loaded in between the two jokers. This is the part that I use the duplicate for. You don't have to use it again, like I said. Um, but I like to go through now and say, so like I said, the jokers will help us find your card. They're talking to me and they're telling me they need your card somewhere near the middle for this to work. This is the excuse I use. Again, use your pattern you want to use. Uh, I go through and I say, your card was what again? The Queen of Hearts, right? So I'm going through and I find the Queen of Hearts. I think I just missed it right there. Uh, you're only going to want to flash the side pip of the card because it doesn't have a signature on it. So again, just kind of flash it like this and point. There's the Queen of Hearts as you go through. What I do at this point, so I can kind of end clean. It's not really a clean end unless you uh, take the card out and ditch it, but it makes it look a little bit cleaner in my opinion. There's no need for this, but again, I just do it. Um, so I show the queen and I get a break at the queen when I close the spread. And I'll either turn over past it like that, or I will just uh, control it to the bottom with double undercuts or uh, whatever I want to do. At this point, it's on top. Uh, I'll just take it to the bottom like that. And then I'll shuffle a card on top of it. So now that I've controlled the card, I say, so it feels about right. It feels feels like it's in the middle now. They're telling me to just riffle the cards towards them, and they're going to find your card. So now comes the fun part. To make the cards jump, I found the best way is to hold the deck about halfway down like this. And so this is flat against the table. This works like that. You can see that worked. Um, what I like to do is just hold the deck in the air about uh, four to six inches away from the cards, about halfway down, and instead of it being flat to the table like that, I hold the deck and I put a tilt on it. That way the air is going to hit the surface and it's going to go underneath those cards and make them spread out and make them look like they jump. So here's how that looks. Just like that. Just experiment a little bit and find out the best way for you. Again, that looks like you just want to pick the deck up and you're going to riffle it towards the jokers just like this. I remember put a small tilt on it, that always helps me. You're just going to riffle just like that. And it's going to make the card look like it jumps out of the deck and lands in between the two jokers. Yeah, that's the explanation. Thank you all for coming back and watching this video. Check out the original video. Again, links in the description box from 2012. I'll be back soon with more performances and tutorials, and I'll even do a giveaway soon. It's been a while since I've done one of those. Let's say 900 subscribers. I think I'm just a couple away from that. So 900 subscribers, I'll do another giveaway. Stay tuned for that. Also, when I don't post to YouTube and you want to see what I'm up to, follow me on Instagram. That link's in the description box. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a good rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.